is we start working with what we refer to as Bernoulli's effect and how it actually uh, works to create air flight. If you look at what's going on at the bottom of this wing cord and the top of the wing, you can actually see that we've got airflow that takes a longer distance to travel over the top than it does across the bottom. And what that does, it rarefies the molecules, spreads them out, and as a result, we have a lower air pressure on the top than we have on the bottom. Well, that lower air pressure is what we refer to then as the lift of the aircraft. Now, we can accomplish exactly the same thing with lift if I change the direction of the wing inside the airflow. Now, because the air is moving and hits the bottom of the wing with a higher force, it creates a uh, lower air pressure on the back of the wing, creating lift in the same way. But if we still, if we're going to take it right through, let's see how we develop the change in that. If I take the rear uh, elevators on your aircraft and I orient them slightly like this, as I change the orientation here, I've generated exactly the same situation there. I've got a further distance across here than I do here. So as a result, this one drops, orienting the uh, around the center of lift. Now, the center of the lift of your aircraft, right here in the center of your cord, it changes the orientation of the entire mass of the aircraft, and so we generate this situation artificially. Now, let's talk about in terms of turbulence. As you do that, you've got the airflow coming across the bottom, the airflow coming across the bottom, or across the top, and you have an area right in here that generates turbulence. Now, that turbulence will actually have a major effect on what we refer to as tip stall because your aileron is located in the outer end of this wing tip indicated in red and as you try to change the direction of the aircraft when it's inside a corner you're going to do so by altering your aileron the one will go up the other one will go down to try to return you to level flight but if this is inside this one right here and you push that aileron up into this turbulated, turbulated area now you've got a situation of non-responsive uh, wingtip we refer to that as tip stall now this happens the greater that you end up with a corner the more turbulence you end up with back at the return at the rear of the, of the wing so in order to correct this what we do is we put it into a situation where we twist our wing so even though we're running like this, even though we've got an angle of attack with the root of the wing, the part indicated by green, the red tip of the wing is still running through the laminar airflow horizontally. So that when we now change the direction of our aileron, we still have a responsive wing tip. This uh, allows us to still have that uh, um, we can still correct our, our cornered flights this way. Now, it also has a bigger effect on something else as well. So if we are running through the air flat in both cases, like this, with a certain amount of washout in our wing, the washout indicating the, the number of degrees that we've altered the tip of the wing, it's going to have an effect like this because now we're having a greater resistance at higher speeds it causes greater drag in the aircraft. So what we win in the one case, we lose in the other case. Now, so I'm building a, a DC-3, and it calls for one and a half degree, uh, one and a half to two and a half degree washout, which is raising the tip of the wing. But we're not going to be taking these massive corners with a 12-foot aircraft. But if I were dealing with a, a six-foot aircraft, uh, like an extra 300 or some. Uh, plane that we could fly slower, we would expect to be doing a lot more tight corners, so you'd, in that instance, want a, a greater degree of washout on it. But it's a way of correcting it, uh, making it more responsive and less subject to tip stall on these high banked corners as we go through them.